Let's start by looking at the basic data types that are available to us. And I will do this just in a new application file where I just create some variables and I will print those to the screen. So let me create a new folder and file here. So I'm going to put a new folder into the command folder. I'm going to call this one as types and the file will be types.com. So the first thing we do is, of course, we declare a package. So we're going to say the package will be main because it will just be um, a main application or an application file. Then I will import the format module because I want to print those variables to the screen. So I'll say import format. And you already know all of this from the Hello World example. So I'm going to create a main function. So let me start by showing you how you declare and initialize variables. If you're coming from Python, you might say, well, isn't that the same thing? Well, no, it's not. In Go, you can declare a variable, but you don't have to initialize it with a value. So let me start with a simple integer variable. So this variable will be called h and will be an integer. And let's set h to 34. So on the first line, we declare that there is a variable h of type integer. However, we don't assign a value to it. This happens on the second line, where we set the value to be 34. You don't have to give it a value, since it will just take the data type's default value if you don't give it one. In this case, it would be 0, since that is the default value for integers. Now, you might say this seems a bit cumbersome. I just want to set h to some value. And you would be right. You can do this in one go. So let's create a new variable called ice and let's set that to two. So we're going to create one called ice. So we say var ice, which is an integer. And we're going to set that to two. So in the end, let's also print both of these variables. Let's print age and let's print ice. If you're like me, I don't like verbosity, and this seems pretty verbose to me. And to tell you the truth, I would use a much shorter way to create a variable and assign a value to it. So let me show you how I would do that. Let's create one called lax, and I'm going to do it like this. To be honest, this is how I declare 95% of my variables. It is just much smoother and should be pretty obvious that lex is an integer. Notice, however, that it's a colon and an equal sign, also called the walrus operator. A simple equal sign as in Python doesn't work. The walrus operator is basically two operations in one, declaring and assigning a value to it. So let's also print that to the screen. However, sometimes I do want to declare variables without setting a value to them. For example, when I create a variable in which I accumulate values, like so, a counter, for example. In that case, the code is not verbose, but contains all the necessary information. One of the reasons I like Go, it's just cleverly designed. But coming now to the data types that are available. We can use all of the data types that we're already used to, integer, floats, booleans, strings. So let me show you some basic data types, actually. Let me put some space in here. So we can create integer one, integer, we can create decimals, for example, 2.14. And this can either be a float 32 or a float 64. So you can have different levels of um, precision. Create a string variable. Uh, actually, let's call this str. Hello world. Let's say string. And we can create a boolean. So let's send all of these to the screen. Another data type is a rune, 
a rune is basically a single character and it's something different from a string. Note that a rune is basically an integer which maps to the Unicode representation of that character. And also let's print that to the screen. Of course, we also have data collections in Go, which are very important for data engineers. We start with an array, which is a collection of multiple values of the same data type, just like a list in Python. You create arrays by using a pair of square brackets containing the size of the array and followed by the data type it holds. For example, let's declare an array of size 10 holding integers. We're going to say var. And let's call this thing integers. The name of the array will be integers. And it will have 10 elements of that integer. Also, we could declare and initialize the array directly like so. As you can see, we are using the walrus operator again and merely add a pair of curly braces containing the actual array data to the end. If arrays are too static for you and you want something that grows dynamically, you can opt for the slice. The slice is like an array. It holds multiple elements of the same data type. However, when you declare it, you give it a length and a capacity. The length defines the number of elements inside the slice. The capacity defines how much memory should be saved for the slice in case you add more elements to it. Once you reach capacity, Go will automatically increase the capacity so that you will always have enough room for adding new elements to the slice, obviously given that you have enough memory. So creating a slice is pretty similar to the array. You just leave the length blank when creating an array. So we're gonna declare a slice containing employees. So let's call this employees and it's a slice, so we use a pair of square brackets, but without the length, and it's going to hold strings. And the values will be John, Jack, Mary, Susan, and Peter. You can also create an empty slice using the make function like so. We create a new slice for sick employees. Currently, there are no sick employees. That is why we set the second argument representing the size to zero. However, the capacity of that slice is five so that there is enough room for all employees. If one of the employees becomes sick, we can just append him or her to the slice. Also, let's make sure to print all of these variables to the screen. Last but not least, we have the map, which is a hash map, or a dictionary as you would call it in Python. The map holds key value pairs. However, those key value pairs must adhere to the type structure that you lay out when you declare the map. Let's say you want to create a map telling you which of the company's machines are currently running. Let's call this one machines. And we're going to create an empty one. We're using make. It's going to be a map where the keys will be strings and the values will be boolean. And let's add some machines to it. So I'm just going to use some random IDs. So stuff that looks semi-real.
And let's print that list to the screen. So you can see that there are three machines of which two are currently running. The signature for map is the map keyword followed by a pair of brackets with the keys data type inside. This is followed by the values data type outside of the square brackets. I put this into a make function call to initialize the respective map. So in the beginning it's empty and then I just add machines to it. If you're coming from Python, you might be waiting for something like the set. In this case, I have to disappoint you. There is no set equivalent in Go. However, you could just add every set element as a key to a map and assign the Boolean true as a value. Then the keys of that map are basically your set members. Variables or function or anything else that start with an uppercase are public. Everything that starts with a lowercase is private. So let me give you an example. So this is visible. This is not visible. So what does this mean? Everything that is an uppercase basically can be imported by other packages, functions, whatever. Everything that is lowercase is private to where it is defined. And again, this is not only true for simple variables, but true for everything else. If you want to expose something, make the first letter uppercase. If you want to keep it private to the package, function, or whatever, make the first letter lowercase. Other than that, the convention goes to use camel case. We don't use underscores. Use uppercase to signal a new word. And you can see that all of these variables are lowercase. That's because it's defined within the application. I don't want to import it anywhere else. But if I would declare something in, for example, some internal code, which I want to import into my application code, then I would need to make this uppercase. Okay, this pretty much covers the basic data types that we're going to encounter quite a bit in reality. To wrap it up, let's just run this code and just make sure that we also print these two variables here. So visible and not visible. And also, I think I forgot to print the counter, right? Let's print that as well. And let's run that code. So again, I'm just going to use the go command line utility. I'm going to build CMD types, types go. And you can see that there's a new executable there. And we're just going to run this one. And it's going to print all of these variables to the screen. Maybe as an exercise, have a look at what we see here on the screen and try to match that to the variables that we print in the code.